One of the most important lessons I ever learned, I learned from a magician. He told me that in every illusion that a magician does, there is a move, there's a trick. There's a sleight of hand, a rigged prop, a card hidden up somebody's sleeve. There's something that the magician is doing that allows him to fool the audience and allows the trick to work. And then he said that there's this idea that magicians have. There's this theory that says that it doesn't matter how nice the magician's clothes are. It doesn't matter how smooth he is with his talking. It doesn't matter how nice the set is or how beautiful his assistant is. None of that matters. If you can actually catch him in the act, if you see the sleight of hand, if you can see that the prop is rigged, if you can see the card up his sleeve, the trick will fail. The, the feeling of being dazzled and amazed completely evaporates. So, when I deal myself a royal flush, out of one hand, and I deal myself a straight flush from the other, that only amazes people if it amazed anyone, if they don't know how the trick is done. The moment that you know how the trick is done, that feeling of amazement evaporates. Let me show you. The way that this trick works is I take the diamonds and the hearts in their complete order on one side, and the spades and the clubs in complete order on the other, and I make it look like I'm shuffling them. I don't really shuffle, I just kind of push them together, and then I cover them with my hands, but while my hands are covered, see that? I'm taking the cards and I'm slowly pulling them apart so that we have all the spades in order with the clubs in order on one side and the diamonds in order and the hearts in order on the other. And then, once I do that, it's no problem to deal hearts from the top of the deck and spades from the bottom. Now, that trick's not going to fool anybody. That feeling is going to disappear and we are going to stop feeling dazzled. The idea is that once you see how the trick is done, the dazzling part quits working. And this doesn't just apply in magic, it applies in the realm of ideas. And right now, in this cultural movement, it especially applies to the woke movement. The people who claim that everything is sexist, that everything is racist, the people who claim that we all need to check our privilege, those people are using a side of academic jargon. They're using linguistic sleight of hand and emotional tricks and verbal misdirection to stack the deck and to tilt the argumentative playing field in their favor. They'll show up and they'll say, we need to talk about social justice. We just want to have a conversation. We just, we just want to talk. There's, there's nothing going on here, it's just a conversation. That's all we want. We just want to talk and have a conversation. And then, they'll proceed to say that they have good hearts. And they're going to use their voice to take up space in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion. That the personal is the political, and that we have to do the work if we want to be on the right side of history. And when you give your reply, they're going to say, well, we need to call a spade a spade. You need to check your privilege and stay in your lane. You need to shut up and listen until you can educate yourself about your problematic ideas. Because you're on the wrong side of history. If they get angry during this conversation, they'll claim that anger is the language of the unheard, and that their anger is fueled by love. If you get angry during this conversation, they will claim that you have white fragility and that you are crying male tears. And if you ask them to explain themselves, they will say, oh, don't demand my emotional labor. But if you offer to explain yourself, they will say, hmm, quit mansplaining. They rig the conversation by redefining the terms and then they use sleight of hand to deal unfair attacks from the bottom of the deck. 
And all of this is done in the service of controlling the conversation, to place themselves in the role of teacher, and to turn you into nothing more than a sponge that is there to absorb the wokeness that they are pouring into the world. And just like a magic trick, as soon as people see what they are doing, and they catch on, it quits working. They stop being dazzled by it. It loses its punch. So much of the power of the uh, woke movement relies on their ability to use these little linguistic and rhetorical sleights of hand to dazzle those who don't see the moves and to browbeat and to browbeat the people who lack the social know-how and academic vocabulary to call out their power moves effectively. But once you see the rhetorical tricks, once you see their conversational and linguistic sleights of hand, the illusion breaks. You can see them for what they are. You can reject it. And then you can push back.